From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. On September 28, 1978, a nun named Sister Vincenza found Pope John Paul I dead in his chambers. John Paul had held the papacy for little more than 30 days, one of the shortest papal appointments in history. Officially, the cause of death was listed as a heart attack. The public, already reeling from the death of the previous pope, was shocked to see that John Paul's reign ended so soon and so unexpectedly. After all, this pope seemed unique and promising. Since the day of his ascension to the papacy, rumors abounded. Would this pope move the church toward a more supportive stance on birth control? Would he reveal long-held Vatican secrets or drive corruption and crime out of the organization? We'll never know for sure. But in the days following his death, the public demanded to know more about the pope's last days, and the answers they received were, to many, unsatisfactory. To skeptics, the Vatican's initially fuzzy details are simply a result of saving face and preventing panic. Yet others are not pleased with the official explanation, and they believe that Pope John Paul I was assassinated. Here's where it gets crazy. Researchers such as David Yallop believe that the Pope was assassinated because he intended to expose corruption in the Vatican at the highest levels, including information about the Vatican Bank's improper financial activities within the world of organized crime. In Yallop's book, In God's Name, he argues that two key bankers, Paul Marcinkus, the head of the Vatican Bank, and Roberto Calvi of the Banco Ambrosiano, were involved in corrupt activities and had ties with secret organizations. For example, Calvi was a member of P2, a secret of Italian Freemason Lodge. Italy has a long history of corruption on the part of secret societies, from the mafioso to Masonic fraternities, and it was common knowledge that P2 members were in the Vatican. But could they actually have had the motivation and the means to assassinate a pope? Yallop's evidence is far from conclusive, but there are several troubling details. First, no autopsy was performed. Second, no death certificate was issued. The world of conspiracy theorists hinges on details like these, and it's no surprise that people across the world have cried foul on the Vatican based on their interpretation of the events. But how much of this could be accurate, and how much could be baseless rumor? David Yallop certainly felt his research was solid, and has even gone on record offering to donate the proceeds of his book to charity if the Vatican will investigate his argument. To this date, the Vatican hasn't taken him up on the offer. However, other, more skeptical authors have challenged Yallop's key points, including possible errors in the initial Italian reports of the Pope's death. The conspiracy theories surrounding the motivations for a possible assassination have a basis in truth. It's no secret that the Italian state has often struggled against organized crime, but who could give us more information about this event? The banker Calvi died unexpectedly, just before news of financial corruption at the bank went public. Paul Marcinkus died in 1990, refusing to discuss his role in several earlier scandals at the bank. Sister Vincenza was spirited away to a distant convent once she discovered the Pope's remains. She passed away in 1984. To skeptics, Pope John Paul I's death was an unfortunate event, and the allegations of foul play don't have merit. But to others, it's a textbook example of something they don't want you to know. Why is this not what it's not similar?